Hi, I'm Dominic Picardo here for the August edition of Spread Bet magazine, and today I'm going to be looking at the case for getting back into emerging markets. Now, in the last decade, of course, emerging markets were really the place to be. What we're looking at here is the price chart of the MSCI Emerging Markets Index, um, which covers the returns from 21 uh, mature stock markets. So you can see this terrific boom that we had in the uh, heading into 2008 and then a massive recovery after 2008. So there was some fantastic returns to be had from uh, emerging markets during that period. And uh, of course, this was a time when the developed markets of uh, UK, US, Japan were, were all struggling. For the last couple of years though, emerging markets have really struggled. Since the uh, since that nasty sell-off we got here in the summer of 2011, uh, emerging markets have never really recovered their poise. You see, the, the MSCI uh, Emerging Markets Index has been chopping sideways in this broad range. And of course, at the same time, the developed markets like the US have been rocketing their new all-time highs, at least uh, before inflation. So what is behind this uh, dramatic reversal of fortunes where, where, we've, where we've gone from a situation where emerging markets were soaring like this to ones where they're in this sideways period? Well, and you have to look at the bigger case for emerging markets because a lot of people still say these things make sense in the long run. The uh, emerging markets still offer much higher growth potential than the rest of the world of course and the developed world has much heavier debt loads at the moment so for a lot of people this is counterintuitive especially having gotten used to these sort of returns over the last decade or so so one factor i think we're seeing here is the comeback of the u.s dollar uh the u.s dollar um May have bottomed, may have finally have bottomed out, and what we're looking at here is the chart of uh, the U.S. dollar over time, and uh, the performance of developed market shares against uh, emerging market shares. And you can see the two track each other pretty closely indeed over time. When the U.S. dollar uh, gets stronger, then uh, em developed markets tend to beat emerging markets, and when the dollar gets weaker, uh, periods like this, periods like this, then emerging markets tend to come out on top of developed markets. Since 2010 or 2011 or so, the dollar has been uh, getting slightly stronger and that has let fed through into, into developed markets beating emerging markets. So if you think that the dollar could uh, rise even more going forward, and I certainly think it, that it may well do, emerging markets could continue to underperform the, uh, the, the world's developed markets. Still, even all that said, there are still things going for emerging markets, I believe. Uh, first of all, emerging markets are not, as a whole, particularly expensive. Working on this MSCI Emerging Markets Index, recently the valuation was pointing to returns over the next couple of years of about 10% uh, a year. So that's not too shabby at all. Far more importantly, though, for me, there's just been an important buy signal. My momentum model, which uh, aims to spot the best buying opportunities and profit-taking opportunities, uh, gave a buy signal at the end of last week. And this model has a pretty good record of picking opportunities. Uh, returns after its signals have massively beaten buy and hold uh, over the last uh, 25 years or so. So... But this model is largely for longer term speculation rather than uh, spread bets. It's something you probably do use uh, an ETF to, to follow. However, you can uh, speculate via spread bets uh, on the MSCI Emerging Markets Index or at least a fund on the MSCI Emerging Markets Index. Here is uh, the intraday chart of uh, a spread bet on the MSCI uh, Emerging Markets Index. And uh, once again, we have seen this pick up, pick up, as you can see, over the over the last few weeks. Um, and my strategy here would be fairly simple. I I would be I'd be willing to take long positions as long as this line, which is the 21 four-hourly exponential moving average, is above this one, which is the um, 
20, 55 uh, uh, hourly moving average. So your buy signal effectively come, comes in around here uh, when the two lines cross over. And my strategy now that you've got this uptrend, I will be buying perhaps when the every time the market sort of dips to around, say, the 13 or the 21, and then, then begins to rally again. That would be, for me, a reasonable intraday, uh, entry point. And I would ride, I'd just be willing to ride that position uh, until the market, say, got very overbought or something. Um, as for looking for a sell signal or when to, when to finally take profits after a long run, I would simply wait until uh, either you've, you've may take, made a satisfactory profit or you've got, or, or we get another crossover of the 21 and the 55 average. That's a reasonable level to look at getting out of that, a trade like this.